Welcome to Radio Free Andor. We are finally back. My name is Jonathan, and joining me as always is Nikki. Hello. How's it going? I am ex- so excited about the new trailers. I cannot even keep it myself contained. It's ridiculous how excited. As am I. Um, so really, we're going to be talking. I mean, of course, you know, neither of us were able to get to celebration. You know. No. Um, Sadly, I got a lot of updates from people who were there, but yeah. We were not able to attend ourselves. And I didn't really, I haven't really watched it much, but, you know, the whole live stream thing. And um, you can still watch it, you know, because it's all right. like, on YouTube and stuff. So, And I think it's kind of funny that some people, like, got to see more stuff than the people, you know, that weren't there than the people who were there. Um, yeah. they were different kinds of stuff. Obviously, they got to see some different stuff that we didn't, but... Um, right, yeah. I think they're just trying to, you know, treat everyone to something special. I ca- it was at celebration four. We did a, uh, the movie marathon, the six movies. And even in those six movies, they had it cut in something that was new just for us at the marathon. So it was really kind of cool because for someone who's, you know, some, most of us who had seen them multiple times, there are thousands of times, uh, it was like, wait a minute, what's that? What? That's new. What? What? It was like we were a bunch of meerkats going, wait a minute, that's that's different. Um, so I think that Lucasfilm is really great at uh, sharing with the fans something, a little something extra and a little something special. Agreed. Um, so I think we should just, uh, we decided that we're going to go with the, uh, the Rebels trailer first. And this is quite a long trailer. Yeah, it's like a little mini episode almost. You know, so that was without, like, and it doesn't give away as much as you would expect a trailer this long would. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just try playing this on the show. We'll okay. See how it turns out. Things are getting worse, just as they did back when I was your age. But back then, there were ten thousand Jedi Knights protecting the galaxy. Now. There's just you and me. We rob from the Empire, give to the needy. A noble cause. Yeah. I'm on my mark. Gotcha. Mission accomplished. Lord Vader. Yes, Master. The rebels of the Lothal system. Hunt them down. As you wish. Fighter, coming in at Mark 3. We've lost Phoenix 1 and 2. We will squeeze Lothal until someone reveals the whereabouts of these traitors. For the good of Lothal, we have to leave. All right, if I tag along? The more the merrier. Fighting alongside soldiers isn't what I signed up for. We are fighting a bigger fight. We can't just run. Ezra, we were lucky to survive. The fear, the anger, the hate. I haven't sensed a presence like that since... The Clone Wars. My name is Rex, Captain, 501st Clone Battalion. I fought with Commander Tano during the Clone Wars. A friend of hers is a friend of mine. Everyone, hang on! For those we are off on an adventure. Rex, keep those ties off our back. Working on it. Surrender or be destroyed. I hope you brought a better class of soldier than the stormtroopers. We'll all be coming now. I'm not afraid. That's what worries me. Your master. 
master has deceived you into believing you can become a Jedi. Oh, chills, chills again. Oh, yeah, it, it's like, oh, my God, it could be a trailer for a film and I would w- happily watch that film. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting about just seeing all these all these sabers, you know, uh-huh. I think, I mean, Darth Vader hearing James, uh, hearing um, James Earl Jones, James Earl Jones. I'm like, oh. Wow. And whoever, I don't know if, I haven't heard if it's Ian McDermott, but whoever is doing the voice of the Emperor, has, if it's not Ian, has nailed it. Agreed. Oh, um, my God. It, 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 every time he spo- he speaks, like, in the films, I, I get, like, oh, I get this sense of dread because he's so good. And that was like, oh, God, he's back. He's back. He's back. Right. Um, I think it's interesting that, um, you know, now we're going to have like Kanan, like in a, um, you know, in a stormtrooper kind of fit. That's, that's one of the images we saw. Yeah. He, he cool. was a, definitely, he was in a sand trooper, uh, armor and I, you know, give, you know, a nice little homage or callback to, uh, episode four when, uh, Han and Luke had to, to don the best car as the Mandos call it. And, uh, uh, pretend to be stormtroopers right i mean i just think it's it's just i I think you know like you said i mean i just getting goosebumps from Mm -hmm. and just a lot of these really cool designs it's great seeing you know the fact that it's just expanding a lot so we're seeing these a wings we're seeing the b wings the x wings it's just um, the adats the you know the old arc uh trooper uh tanks as we would call them now uh, the transport, the old arc transports from the Clone Wars, and uh, it's it just so much. They have put so much into that. It just makes the next season look like it's going to be even better and more exciting and more uh, a little more heartbreaking. I the part that I love the most and the part that makes me the happiest about this trailer, and it's a question that I have had since the Clone Wars which is what happens to Rex because I love the character of Captain Rex, but my nine-year-old nephew, his very favorite character from the time I introduced him to star Wars has been Captain Rex and Captain Rex sent him an autographed picture for his birthday. And he still at nine, you know, that was when he was four. Now he's nine and he still loves Rex. And one of his big questions is, what happened to Rex after order, you know, did he go bad with order 66? Um, and I could never answer the question. And part of me always wanted to say, no, of course not. He's Rex. You know, we don't see him in, uh, in a uh, revenge of the Sith for a reason. Maybe he's been, you know, it's like, Oh God, maybe he's been killed in the clone wars or maybe, maybe he was an early clone who didn't have the implant to, to switch. So to see an older kind of grizzled, but very clearly not turned to the dark side Rex made me the happiest. I actually teared up. I was like, Oh my gosh, he's safe. (laughs) He didn't go bad. He's alive. He's with their other former clone troopers. I love how he sneered at the word storm trooper. Uh, and to have that voice back and it, that's the part of the trailer. I mean, every, oh, so much was cool. I mean, some of those lightsaber moves and some of those designs of the new characters and even Vader's design, which really looked a lot like Macquarie's uh, uh, conceptual art for Vader. They made me really happy and I was so excited. And But seeing Rex alive was the best part for me. And part of me wishes they had kind of kept that a little bit of a secret, but the the bigger part of me is like, I, oh gosh, I'm so relieved. He's okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it was just so cool. I mean, the big white beard reminds me of something, some, um, from some other movie or TV show, it's just having this, 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 um, white sage, you know, I got yeah. a big kind of Santa Claus kind of beard, you know, and he's right. kind of with his other clone. I think it's kind of definitely appropriate to have the white beard, 
you know, because he used to have the, the white arm. White hair. The white hair. You know, he that was his way of distinguishing himself, like a lot of the clones did, was they physically would tattoo themselves or change their hair or do something to make themselves stand out because they were all the same. And that's why their armor or Beskar all, often had, to, you know, unique markings was so they could feel like individuals. Um, so the fact that he has no hair, but he's got the white on his beard now, it, it did. And he's looked like he was living on a tattooing esque if not tattooing itself planet. And so it was like kind of Obi-Wan esque. Right. Uh, yeah, I think it's, and I think it's really cool. Like the, the suits they made for themselves, kind of, a, they've kind of come up. It's sort of a, you know, obviously it doesn't, it's not fully cover like these clone troopers, but it has kind of like the shoulder pads are a little bit different. They got some like, you know, they can show the muscle that's going right, right there, you know, so it's just kind of a. It's very Mad Max kind yes. of. Yeah. And, um, another movie I'm looking forward to. Um, As am I. but that to me and seeing that, you know, the, there were at least two others, and I know my favorite clone trooper, who was Echo, uh, didn't survive the Clone Wars. So I'm just, I'm like, oh, who are those guys? Who, you know, who, which one, you know, which one, other one survived? And I'm curious. It it brings up more questions for me, like how, you know, why weren't they involved in Order sixty six? Why weren't they in uh, Revenge of the Sith? Um, they, I mean, Rex was in the original animated Clone Wars, uh, but. Um, so I, I, you know, I have those questions, but the bigger part of me is just like, yes, this pump, he's still alive. And I'm so excited to tell my nephew, you know, our questions have kind of been answered. Nick Rex survives and he's a good guy still, because that's one of the things Nicholas loved about him was, uh, what a good guy he was, you know, he was loyal and he was dedicated, um, and now, you know, any friend of Ahsoka Tano is a friend of his. It's like, well, can I can I still be your friend, Rex, even though I'm not a big fan of Ahsoka? <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely cool <clears throat> that, um, you know, the Clone Wars and the whole, like, what was it Kanan says? Like, he hasn't felt something like this. Uh, yeah, and then the- Ahsoka, uh, 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 an anger, and an evil and an anger, like, since the Clone War, and so Ahsoka finishes the sentence, and makes me curious to you know she has to know that that's anakin you know that's another you know because obviously because she she's a part of the rebel alliance as is bail who knows and yoda knows but you know if she even knows where yoda is um you know how did she just survive the purge yoda you seek yoda <laughs> <laughs> you must go to the dagobah system um so you know i have a lot of questions about you know my brain after excitement and watching something going this is fantastic my brain on the third or fourth viewing goes okay now i need you to explain and and how this fits into continuity (laughs) so i'll get to the point where i'm like okay i really need this to fit for me but right now i'm at the point where i'm like ah my god this is so cool this is the coolest trailer for any animated series in the history of animation and um you don't really get trailers for animation like this. And it really is because it really was felt like a film. And I definitely line up early to see it. Uh, I'm, I'm so thrilled. They have James Earl Jones. I mean, you can, uh, to me, you can't have Darth Vader without him. Um, and we got Hondo back. I got Hondo back. Yeah. You know, we also, and, we also have, um, what's the other guy? I think we also have the guy with the, um, the flying uh, Embo. Yeah, I think that's it. Embo, the one with the uh, the boomerang yeah. um, helmet. So he's back, and I think it's going to be awesome just to see. I mean, near the end of the trailer scene, Vader just approach oh. Kanan and Ezra. Uh, yeah, and, you know, just kind of swats them away like flies, basically, and then like tries to get Ezra to cut off his own head with his own lightsaber using the Force, and you know. We obviously know that, you know, part of us, you know, say, well, they're not going to kill Ezra. But, you know, is that from farther in the season? You know, how does he get out of it? So you have all these, like, things to look forward to. There's a lot of anticipation that I didn't feel, while I felt anticipation for the first season, I didn't feel this level of anticipation. And when I'm I'm really looking forward, one, one thing I'm amazed 
more than anything, and even if you're not into Rebels, there's no way you can deny these fantastic designs. You know, the, oh my god, the Tie Fighters. You know, all the Star Fighters. You know, seeing Darth Vader's Tie Interceptor. You know, and just blowing people away. Yeah, I know. and and I like seeing the the return to the old, like when we see Rex kind of lives in an arc transport, um, and then you see it like coming up across coming up to the new version of the, the ARC transport, which is the ADAT or the earliest version of the ADAT. And it's like the old meeting, the new and like, which, you know, which will survive. Um, and, you know, I'm a huge fan of the ADAT walker. Um, so seeing that gave me the giggles like, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God. ADATs, ADATs, not ATSTs, ADATs. Um, so the designs of some of the new characters uh, the designs of the lightsabers, just like there's that one scene where he's just spinning his lightsaber, the spinning of the lightsaber. And it was almost hypnotic. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Because they, one thing this show does, one of the things the show does really well is its lightsaber animation and its movement uh, of the lightsabers. And I'm just like, oh my God, that's just getting better and better and better. Yeah, I'm really, I really like the fact that we, it looks like we have, you know, aside from Darth Vader, because I think there was a concern way back, you know, like, you know, Darth Vader, if he shows up, you know, we need to kind of, we don't want too much of him because then it won't, it'll, he'll outshine the other characters. So it looks like we are going to be getting a new, like, equivalent, a new, like a, um, like a new Inquisitor, perhaps, because, and it looks like it could be someone that's like in the same, um, it's the same like body as like a Saj. Yeah, know, the same kind of reflexes and spinning. And I also got kind of a Cad Bane. Uh, I don't know if it was the headgear. I got kind of a Cad Bane feel about one of those uh, new characters. And um, I would love to see a character like a Saj, but actually, like she was so cool. But I want you know, I don't want them to just keep going back to the old well and pulling. I was like, well, let's make a character just like so and so. I was like, I want a new character. But if it, you know, kind of has some of the similarities that made Asajj so cool, uh, that would be really amazing. And that's kind of what I think they're doing, is they haven't relied on the past to create the future. The past to create the future. <laughs> save the past, to, you know, save the future. To, uh, uh. <laughs> so, yeah, I just think the whole trailer just blew me away. And I have a friend who was at uh, my friend Zach, uh, who was at uh, celebration, who was so upset he couldn't get into the screening of the first episode. And oh. I was like, ah, and Leah couldn't get in either. And I was just like, ah, like I wanted someone to like come out of there and tell me everything about it. Someone to be jealous of. I was jealous of everybody there. Um, I'm, I hopefully will be talking to Leah on RFE soon. So, and she'll tell us about her experience. I know some of what happened and, uh, she, you know, she said, you know, it's a new company running the convention this year. Uh, so she said there were, you know, there's some complaints about the new company that, and how they organized it, but she had a really great time. Yeah. And of course next year we're, uh, <laughs> they're going to London. Right. So. For celebration Europe, um, which and- la- let's see after, the last celebration, which is celebration six, the next one was in Germany, uh, the following year. And hopefully, I mean, I would love to go to London. That's, that's been a goal of mine since I was five is to go to England. So if I can go, I absolutely will be going to celebration Europe, but if I can't, I will, there's no way I'm missing the next celebration. Yeah. I think there is, I've heard rumors that it could be in Orlando. Um, (laughs) Not Orlando again. I'm sorry, to people who live in Orlando, but it's too far. I mean, I think I think there is a point to like um, it isn't that bad of an idea to like switch from East Coast to West Coast to kind of make it fair for the people. Well, that's fine, but they had celebrations five and six, and I mean we've had we had four and now seven in in California. So yeah, yeah, that's it's definitely a high if possibility. It, I mean, I don't mind going back to Orlando. I get to go to Disney World and Harry Potter, but um, I would really like to see it back in Anaheim. As would I, especially if I'm going to be, you know, living in California. 
Right, you know, exactly. Yeah. Then it's like, oh, God, I got to go fly all the way to Florida. You know, back to the East Coast where I just left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the first year I haven't been in Orlando. <laughs> it's, it, you know, last year was the first year I hadn't been in Orlando uh, in the last five years. So I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do with myself? It's the first year I haven't gone to Orlando in forever. Um, but, yeah, I I really wish I had been at Celebration 7 and uh, – been able to see the new Clone Wars or not Clone Wars, the new Rebels episode. Cause they did show, I think the first two episodes. Yeah. And I was like, Oh damn it. Yeah. Not I, only did you get the new trailer and you got all these cool panels and you, the cast and you got to see the first two episodes of Rebels. I mean, that's just not fair. Yeah. I think something else interesting is that there's been going to be a lot more conflict inside the crew of the ghost and yeah. Kanan's life because we know, cause we know, um, um, oh, I'm blanking out her name. Not Sabine. Hera. 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 We know she has, like, the most information about all this. So, Kane is kind of like, yeah, I didn't sign up for this huge war. Because he kind of, because we had the first season, it was mainly just this little group, you know, going from hopping to hopping to hopping to different places. And that's what Kane kind of thought. So, I'm guessing here, he's kind of like, I'm not sure about this big world of all these ships and these, all right. these, you know, all these um, blockade runners and such. Well, he was kind of, he's like, he kind of had more of a Robin Hood kind of feel like this. I, he, I thought we were supposed to steal from the Empire to give to the people who are suffering. And uh, now he's kind of involved in something he didn't ex- anticipate being involved in, and nor did he want to be involved in, because a Jedi does not seek these things. They don't uh, attack. They don't go to, you know, Jedi, you know, unless they have to. They attack to defend you know, they only use their weapons and their skills in defense. Um, so it wasn't what he signed on for when he signed and you know, he and Hera hooked up. But it's something I think Hera has always been ready for. Whereas Kanan has to make a complete like flip in his brain about what's what now he has to do. Um, so and then you have Sabine, who's all in and uh you have Zeb who just wants to crack skulls and yeah, like, so, we, got you know, to, we got to see another one of those. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, so one more one more thing I'd like to cover. Um, you know, we have you know we have Vader, um, big character coming back, obviously, and I'm guess, I'm assuming he's going to be like I, I mean I'm going to guess he's going to be like in the first two episodes. Like if they have like yeah. a like a two episode premiere, he'll be in both of those, and then he'll yeah, be in the last maybe. couple. Yeah, I don't think they'll use them every episode. You don't want to overplay your hand, um, and you don't want it to become the Vader show. Is this does the same thing apply to Ahsoka? I, you know, I've never been a fan of that character, so I think she's actually going to be in in more episodes than I think so too. Then I would, but I I think I like her much better as an adult because I didn't I don't get the same kind of oh god it's her thing that I used to get when watching Clone Wars. I was like, oh, it's Ahsoka, you know, and, you know, I like Ashley. She, you know, I have, you know, no problems with Ashley Eckstein. Uh, she actually, I got named fangirl of the day a couple weeks, a few weeks ago. Uh, I, I don't know why. I, Leah had put me up for it and I got it. And I was like, okay, that's really weird. So, I mean, she obviously has taste. <laughs> yeah. Good I'm kidding. Taste. I don't have an ego. Um, so I was just like, but I think a mature Ahsoka is one that I could probably identify more with than the bratty teenage Ahsoka who annoyed the living hell out of me in most of the episodes. Um, but I didn't get a, oh, God thing. I was like, oh, it's Ahsoka. She's going to be a part of the show now. That's fun. That's cool. Um, I don't want it. also don't want it to be Clone Wars revamped. Uh, so hope, and I don't think the, the writers and the creators of the show want it to be that either. So I think that they'll use legacy, so to speak, characters sparingly and only if absolutely needed and appropriately used. Um, like I don't think the clones, you know, our remaining clone troopers are going to be in every episode. I think maybe one or two, um, though I would love to see Rex more. But, you know, he, you can't just say we have we could put this character in and this character in and this character in and this character in just because we all want that to happen. And it, it make no sense. Everything has to make sense. And I think Ahsoka being a part of this season of Clone Wars makes sense because they're kind of going 
from a really secretive rebellion, a hidden rebellion, into a full-scale rebellion. Agreed. So, uh, more on Rebels. Of course, we'll be reviewing it. Um, when do you think we're going to get a start date? Like in October again? Probably. I mean, it, it worked out really well last time. Um, you, I just, you know, it looks like they have the whole season pretty much done. So I think it's probably just a lot of editing left over to do, a lot of post. Um, so we'll find out. I mean, I think if it was going to be any later or sooner, I think it was going to be any sooner than October, we would know the date by now. I think so, too. I mean, it could be something they revealed at Celebration, but nobody, but I would think somebody would have said something online. And I haven't seen anything. Okay, um, so we're going to move on to The Force Awakens teaser number two. that music. The force is strong in my family. My father has it. last line gets me every time yeah it's like he's speaking for all of us you know we're home but where is home now you know yeah are we on Corellia are we on Coruscant or are back on Tatooine uh, well we know we went back to Tatooine but you know where is Leia where where does Han and where do Han and Leia call home um, of, course, we do, of course, we do have confirmation actually that that is not Tatooine, right? But I think at some point we did go. They do go back to Tatooine. I think that's a good because they well. um, they've talked about it, you know, when they were making it. Because uh, but they also shot in another desert area, Abu Dhabi. So you know, we could have two desert planets, or maybe they'll they, maybe they didn't go back to Tatooine. But I, you know, we heard all the rumors were that we're going back to Tatooine at some point. So uh, I I love the the imagery of Vader's burnt helmet and God, just the opening moment with seeing that Star Destroyer just crashed into the desert. It's just so haunting. And it's just like, oh my God, this you know, this is what happens after the massive rebellion wins. It's like Oh my, it just gave, it gives me the chills. It's like the first tra- teaser trailer was, was great. It was fantastic. We got to see some of the characters, but this one just, it, it's just, oh my God. I, <laughs> yeah. And we're there are bre- really few words. <laughs> yeah. We'll break it down. Uh, given our thoughts along the way. So we do yeah. have this, you know, um, you know, of course we didn't have, you know, we don't have a 21st century Fox and we don't have a, um, Disney, you know, it just goes right from Lucasfilm, and I think that kind of makes sense, you know, just kind of like the Marvel thing, of just right. starting with the studio and then going right into the trailer. Right, and I think that I will miss the 20th Century Fox intro, just because I'm such a traditionalist in so many ways, and that, that definite, the fanfare 
has become kind of whenever I hear it on any 20th Century Fox film, I literally my ears perk up and I think Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Like a dog. And yeah, it's like Pavlovian at this point where it's like, oh, Star Wars. And like, I'll be sitting at home and we'll be watching a DVD and it'll come on. And my roommate James will say, I know Star Wars. And I was just like, I wasn't going to say because you were saying it in your head Um, because I really do. (laughs) It's that, you know, there are some things, you know, usually any mention of Star Wars will turn my head and that fanfare specifically. But and something I'll, we'll have to get used to. And, you know, it's a new it's a new era for Star Wars. And, you know, it's one of the lesser things I will miss. Um, I, you know, judging by this trailer, I don't think I'll be thinking about things I'll be missing. I'll be thinking about things that are just absolutely unbelievably cool. Agreed. Um, you know, I think it's cool that, you know, we do get a lot of music that's you know brought back from the ot but then we also do get a little bit new stuff like near the beginning and stuff. yeah i really love you can definitely tell it fits in with with the star wars uh saga and the music but john williams really does write and compose to the scenes he doesn't you don't just say okay here's some music throw it in here throw it in there he is such a professional and all movie uh and filmmaking uh, musicians, Compose, yeah. composers and scorers, they, they, the great ones compose as they watch the scenes and they make sure it fits. And John Williams is the master of that because everything fits. And even here, you know, like the beginning, when you see the Lucasfilm logo and that b- beginning of that really soft uh, music that we know so well. Yes. And it just, it's like, it's draws in, the fan, the, the original fans, and it's going to draw in more fans because that music is just so beautifully haunting. Yes, and I think it's definitely interesting. Like you said, you know, the the Rebels have won, so we kind of get this idea that I think it'll be definitely interesting of seeing, like, um, you know, a Star Destroyer like this and any other... Um, I mean, this is just to kind of show us something big that's crashed, but, you know, we'll see all sorts of other um, right. things scattered broken down, Broken down TIE fighters, maybe... And then to see the new TIE fighters, you know, in contrast to like when we were seeing the stormtroopers kind of building up and you see all the new ships and the new weaponry. It's like it's the old, you know, it's like we're, we're coming back and we're bringing it. We're bringing the force, or so to speak, not the real force. But, you know, it was really good contrast to see the old and the new. Right. JJ was very smart to do that, to show us what happened to the old and to show us where the new is going. Yeah. I mean, speaking of Darth Vader, you uh, know, I mean, what do you think of the, what do you think of this helmet? It's got this uh, giant gash like, in it, like it's been, like it's been melted. Well, it has, you know, in the end of return of the Jedi, Luke burnt the suit right. to, to rid, you know, kind of rid Anakin of Darth Vader's, you know, lingering stench, so to speak. Though we all love Vader, we just, some of us just are ready to admit it. We love Vader. Um, So I think the fact that it looked like somebody might have found the mask on Endor or Luke kept it for some reason, which would make sense. You know, he's, he's searched so hard for his, so long long for his father. And um, part of him, you know, he was the one who had the moment with his father that was truly like a father son moment. And he um, was there for the redemption of, of Anakin Skywalker. So it makes sense that Luke would have kept it. Um, it could be a, like a flashback to like the aftermath of what happened on Endor. Um, but to have that in then, tra- you know, with the narration of the force runs strong in my family, my father has it, had it, I have it. It the vo- you know it was like they just kind of it sounded exactly the way it did in Return of the Jedi, like his voice almost hadn't changed. Right. And then they added that, and you have my sister has it, and you have it, and then he hands, and you could tell it's a female that he's handing a lightsaber to. Um. So I don't know if that's Daisy Ridley or it's another character. I think it's Daisy Ridley. Uh. So is you know that brings up questions you know she, obviously she's a skywalker descendant because of the speech it runs strong in my family and you have it uh is she you know does luke have a kid out there does you know is this one of Leia and han's children do they even have children uh 
because we have to, you know, you know, delegate or relegate the, uh, the books to legend. Um, so it just brings up so many questions. Like, who is that? Who is it? Who is she? Who is she? Um, so I, I just thought it was really beautifully done. And I think Mark Hamill has become such a, his acting has just improved like a hundred times over since the star Wars saga. Um, like if you watch the flash, he was just on the flash a couple of weeks ago and Oh my God, if he doesn't get an Emmy nomination for that performance. <laughs> yeah. Like a, like a guest Emmy nomination. Yeah. He was amazing. And his voiceover work is just brilliant. So, um, I'm really looking forward to seeing a new Luke because before my, you know, Luke was always kind of the whiny brat to me, but I, I'm not getting that vibe anymore. Right. I, I think it's really cool. We get to see R2 again. Uh, yes. You know, and we do get to see, and we're kind of, I think we kind of assume this is Luke, you know, and he has this like, um, but it is weird that he has this much different hands, like almost like the, like the skin, like the, um, he took the skin off. Yeah. Or okay. like burned off or something. Cause it looks a right. lot more, lo- looks a lot older and a lot more right. like, like something I, from the Clone Wars. I think he probably doesn't use the prosthetic skin anymore. Cause it, it does look like kind of what Anakin had, which is what we imagine, uh, Luke got, um, when, you know, but we have only seen it with the skin you know, with the, with the fake skin on it. So it looks like it's Luke, uh, just because it's the correct hand. Right. It's his right. Um, and it's, he's with R2. Yeah. And it's kind um, of put, and it's kind of putting it on his, on his, on, on his head. On kind his, of like he's, he's a, he's a friend. It, yeah. And Luke and R2 are always very close. I mean, I make, if R2 is not with C3PO, which to me is like, he, he has to be with C3PO at some point. Um, R2 is loyal loyalty is to Luke. Um, he would go with him and Luke would take him with him. Yeah. Even in because place like, they do, they do have in <laughs> place like Dagobah. You know? Yeah. I mean, he took him to Dagobah and I mean, R2 is very clearly not happy with being in Dagobah. Um, but I think R2 would go wherever Luke wanted him to go. And Luke needs someone with him like R2. Right. <clears throat> I mean, I think it's just, um, it's just beautiful. It's just it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, I do I do hear people that were like crying yeah, at this trailer. You know? I weep. I literally go into fits when I watch it. I mean, I cry. I've watched it maybe a dozen or more times, and I cry every time. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, Kevin Smith, you know, is feeling <laughs> this as well after he kind of teared up from seeing that Millennium Falcon going up the uh, the Falcon ramp. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what. I mean, he is the king of the nerds, and the fact that he got to see it, I think I'm, I'm actually happy for him. You know that he got to, he got to, that he got to be be on the set, and he got to be on the Millennium Falcon, and just I was like, I'm so like excited for him, even though I want to be there too. But it's like he was doing it for all of us, right? Um, you know, yeah. So I guess kind of. You know, this kind of takes us to be in the middle, and of course they say this Christmas, you know, and of course a lot of times they do that, even if it isn't exactly Christmas, it's still within like a week, right? You and know. it's Christmas time and the Christmas season, you know. They say is you know everything for the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, but I will be there opening night, and uh, if it's a midnight show or if they do a ten o'clock, I will be at the very first screening I could possibly find because I am not sitting at home and waiting for this like a couple days till the crowds die down i'm seeing this as soon as humanly possible yeah i mean i think it is you know as far as the x-wings you know from the you know the first teaser you know we just had you know we saw like a bunch of them like in their formation but it was just like oscar isaac just kind of very straight you know it was like a very you know when, yeah. they, had, when they kind of bounce but here you know we have him flying around almost like yeah what is going on here Woo. You know? Yeah, I know. It just, I was so cool to see those tie fi- those uh, X wings in going in the water. I mean, what? Like skimming the water. One of them like looked like it had you know gotten really really close. There was a lot of splashes. I was like, that we never knew X wings could do that. Of course, right. we never really went to a planet where they had that. I mean, it was not like the 
the X Wings went to Camino, you know, or Naboo, you know, where there was a lot of water, it was just like they were only in battle. They were only in the, in the air. We've never really seen the X Wings on land flying. They've always been in space. Yeah, and I think it's just, it's really great to see, like, I mean, amazing how technology has come across, because, like you said, I mean, I mean, you know, we had the X Wings in leaving, you know, um, you know, leaving the, uh, Oh, I'm blanking out on the, you know, in episode four, you know, mm-hmm. leaving the moon. But aside, aside from that, yeah, you know, and that right. was just across some force. Now we have, I mean, technology has come where you see them like going far past, you know, and just like, just like it would in reality, like any kind of airplane going right. past the water and the water just going up and just spraying. Right. Yeah. When they were on Yavin 4, um, I mean, you saw them rise above the jungle at the Masasi temple, but it was a takeoff. We've never seen them flying on land, like flying that close to the ground. And to know that they can do that, that they're both kind of that. I'm sure they don't, you know, take them around, use them as cars. That's what they have speeders for. But um, it was just really cool to see how, you know, what kinds of things that we could have them do. It was like when R2 flew in uh, uh, episode two, episode two, it was like, Oh my god, I didn't know R2 could do that. And so now with the with the top, with the X Wings, it's like, oh my god, I didn't know X Wings could do that. And it's like, well, so we still have TIE fighters, but they're a little different, but what else do we have? You no know, what other ships are are there still snow speeders and you know, are there still speeder bikes? Are there you know, so it's just I what I love about both the Rebels trailer and this trailer is they give you they they answer some questions, but they leave you with more and anticipating more. You know, I think what really like when we kind of had a musical a musical change, and what gave me goosebumps is when we saw all the stormtroopers, all these new stormtroopers being lined up. I'm like, wow, this really. I mean, I think every time I watch that or think about it, I get goosebumps, and it's just amazing to see this this whole brigade, this whole brigade, and then we see, you know, we are getting like a new um, symbol that rec- that that represents the empire. You know, it seems like a it's like a red flag with like a, a black you know, circle, um, like outline and some little things on the outside, maybe some kind of like, uh, representation of the empire yeah. or the kind of the remnants of the empire. It seems so right. really interesting. I'm, I'm sure there'll be some tattoos going on. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm already pondering. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah. And then that scene with all the stormtroopers that very you know, evocative of Hitler's Germany. I mean, it was just chilling. And to see the banners, and it was just like, oh my god, it's they're coming back. And who is that guy in black? That's very very tiny. That you have to like, it's like you zoom in, and he's still a little tiny black blur. But who the heck is that? Who is leading this this new this new uh, surge of stormtroopers and the old empire? Right, it's and like, I think oh it's, my god, what's going on? And I thought one of the one of the one of the best shots is to see Daisy Ridley, uh, <laughs> BB-8, and John Boyega just running across. And it's it's yeah. almost and this shot is one of those. I mean, there's a lot of like you know shots that go on, like scenes that go on for a bit in this trailer, but there's some that's just like they do have some. And this one just goes by so fast, like faster than almost as fast as BB-8 going by. And yeah. I find myself stopping and pausing to see if maybe she has like a lightsaber swinging, but I didn't see one. Yeah, I, I didn't I, either. You know, so it's almost like they're really it's like the thing about this trailer is that they've showed so much, but they still don't want to like confirm, you know, Daisy Ridley is like the Jedi in training. You know, there's so many yeah. hints, but it's still. We don't know for sure. You know, we still don't know for sure. You know, there's all these different hints, different places, and that looks, and what she's wearing is similar to, like, um, like Jedi. um, Right. And it was also kind of, if she's on a desert planet, it was kind of like what they were on Tatooine, you know? Right. Um, Or what what is the the new one called? Jakarta? No, not Jakarta. No, that's Indonesia. Yes. (laughs) Um, It's called, mm, now this is going to bother me. Okay. I have to look it up. No, that's not. No, that's no Tatooine. Okay, Jakku. That's Jakku. What, Jakku. It sounds like something out of um, I don't know, The Lion King or The Jungle Book. 
Or um, oh, and I think I feel like it's it's from something else as well. I just can't put my finger on it. It's reminiscent. It's you know, it's kind of like Hoth, Jakku, just or Aku. <laughs> Aku, that's from uh, Samurai Jack, right? Oh God, it's been so long since I've seen Samurai Jack. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think it's definitely interesting um, to get Jakku um, to see like uh, Finn, Ray, and BB-8 are just like you know run across, you know, running towards us. I think that's just really... Um, and, you know, of course, we do get BB-8. They did uh, at the panel. We'll talk about the panel um, at a later date, but, you know, we, okay. did, see, we did see BB-8 coming across um, the stage, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, Leah was Leah was at that panel, so I think she'd be the one to talk to about that. You know. That's just going to be... That had to be just the coolest thing. I love that he's a practical effect. That yeah. he, 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 you, we could have it. And she's actually designing something right now around BB 8. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. with her graphic design, uh, I cannot wait. I love how he just kind of peeks around the corner. He's kind of like the shy droid. And it, it makes me happy when I see him. <laughs> and, and it's, and it's not as awkward as some of the other ones. I mean, he literally can just like sit there and just turn. You know, yeah. I thought that was kind of cool versus R2, who, or has another to back, back up. Turn. He has to do almost a three point turn. You know, uh, with like in driving, but he actually, but BB-8 can just kind of turn his head and go the other way. I know? mean, I guess R two, what bubble. he likes is to kind of like be behind something, and then he uses his like little periscope thing. That's what he yeah. likes to do. Yeah. Um, I think another thing interesting is that we're seeing. It seems like this is like the third or fourth time. Like this is at least the second time we've seen John Boy Ega like. <sighs> Yeah, and breathing really hard and sweating in his stormtrooper. Yeah, it it makes me wonder: is he really a stormtrooper, or is he using the best car to to get out of something? Is he is he trying to escape something and using it as a disguise? But we've seen him now in a couple different situations with the the armor. Maybe you know he's a stormtrooper who realizes he's on the. This is not what he wants to fight for. Kind of like Han when he joined the. Imperial Navy as a teenager, um, when he saw how the the Empire was treating the Wookiees, well, this is all legend now. He he freed Chewbacca and they escaped, and he had never looked back. Uh, so it, you know, because he didn't like what he saw was going on in the Empire. Um, so I don't know. You know, that's more questions. More I mean, questions. while it is legends, I think that's definitely. It's definitely something, if they were to, like, clear up exactly what happened, that's definitely a possibility, you know. Oh, yeah, I think because we know it's, you know, the Wookiees were enslaved, um, that's that's kind of been confirmed. The life debt Uh, thing. The life debt. um, So I'm just, I'm glad that he, you know, Chewie's alive, and he looks fantastic for his age, because he was over 200 in the original trilogy. Um so, you know, somebody said, why does Han look so old and Chewie look so young? And I was like, Wookiees age very slowly. <laughs> yeah. Any chance of Life Day becoming um, king? No, no. <laughs> okay. No, don't even go there. All right. Do um, not make me relive that. Um, I think it's really cool seeing these ships go through. And we do get to see a, um, um, I forget where it was. We get to, we do get to see, you know, like some, some like, it's like a um, combination of like, um, like a uh, death trooper armor combined with like some other kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about around the 120 yeah. mark. So that looks. What do you, what's your take on this? Which one? I'm sorry. Oh, the one around the 120 mark about the. Uh, it almost looks like he's a a bounty hunter or some kind of special forces. Oh trooper. God, yes. Oh my God, it was so cool because it kind of reminded me of Revan from the EU. Um, I don't know who that is, but I want to know. Mm-hmm. I want to know now. It just was so cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's just, I know there's a lot of other adjectives I could use, but it's just like, oh my God, it's so cool. Right. Um, it's just the <sighs> whole, just the whole, um, um, you know, seeing him like use his hand for the force. Uh-huh. You know? I, like, we're, I think we're going to have some Sith Lords on our case. So, you know, uh, or at least one, because that guy was super cool. Yeah, Adam Driver definitely, and also the um uh, the mask looks a little bit like the the Kindu mask right. almost right, which is kind of why I when I saw it I was like oh my god that kind of looks like Darth Revan because Darth Revan in the the Legends uh 
wore a very similar kind of gear. Um, that excites me because I always thought that that was the coolest kind of outfit that they could wear. It was just like, oh my gosh, that's just super cool. Amazing. It's beautiful. It's like I've never thought of Star Wars costuming before. I mean, except for in the prequels, because in the original trilogy, there wasn't a whole lot of differentiation in the cost- costuming. I mean, except for like Han, at one point he wears a vest, and another point he wears a jacket. Um, so, and then there's the camo gear. But it, really, the cost the when Star Wars costuming got became gorgeous was with the prequels because of all of Padme's. Uh, uh, costumes and this just is like so far i'm loving all the costumes that i'm seeing in here even though some are just very simple they're very appropriate and they're very i i get star wars from them right um yeah i mean i think another one um i was mentioning actually the one i was actually talking about was this one i just sent you a picture of it um um because i figure um you'd have some insight as far as like the troopers go and such. Oh, he looks like a shadow trooper. Yeah. Yeah. Shadow trooper. So, um, and he just has this, like this really shiny armor, which I think looks really cool. Um, yeah. He's very reminiscent of a shadow trooper. The helmet is different, but I love the cape. Yes. Um, so you think it's some kind of, so you think they have some kind of like leftover, like squad of these special kinds of troopers. Um, I think they probably created a squad. Because it's it's very reminiscent of Shadow Troopers, but like you said, this is really this is shinier. Shadow Troopers were like almost they were matte. You know, they they were supposed to blend in. They were supposed to not be seen. Um, this guy looks like an assassin. It's almost like a bounty hunt, a new kind of bounty hunter. Uh, but I'm looking at the the belt, and that that's definitely a stormtrooper. Uh, utility belt but right. he, he definitely the cape is just oh my god it just makes him look even cooler yeah um i do think seeing I, I do look forward to seeing this kind of relationship between daisy ridley and john boyega and just seeing how her just like taking his hand you know just like take my hand you know just to let's go on this let's, let's see where we're going next you know and just seeing him sweating on the ground again yeah you know and um, and then, of course, that's when we jump to what do we jump to next? Your favorite scene, the scene that's <laughs> the teary home. scene. Yes, that's that's They're the Falcon, the Falcon flying into the remains of a giant ship's engine uh, exhaust. And all you hear, all you hear is chewy. And then you see them as we're home. And I was like, ah, OK, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it was just in the and and if you check now, if you go to facebook dot com slash radio for Yendo, you will see that that is the new background. Yes, you know. I mean, doesn't he look great? I mean, God, Han Solo. Uh, yeah, he looks, so, a bit, he looks a bit better than Mark Hamill. Well, he also, you know, Harrison also didn't have a horrible car accident and really bad plastic surgery to make to fix it. So, yeah. poor Mark. Um, yes, poor Mark. Maybe it's made him a better actor. I don't know. He certainly did get better after it. But, um, you know, I, sadly that had to happen. That accident had to happen because, I mean, he we almost lost Mark Hamill. Um, yeah. But Harrison just, he, that, I mean, he just, that, it wasn't, I didn't see Harrison Ford. I saw him, I saw Han Solo. Yeah, um, same here. I'm, I'm so glad that they showed him. Like, of all, I mean, we heard Luke's voice. And we maybe saw, you know, him and, you know, Luke under a cape, you know, we couldn't see his face. Um, but we saw Han and Chewie. And I think for so many of us who grew up, uh, you know, obsessed with Star Wars from the beginning, that's what we really, we, we really needed that connection. Yes, every, all both teaser trailers have been fantastic. And seeing the Falcon was my favorite part of, you know, the first trailer. And seeing Han and Chewie was my favorite part of this trailer. So, and I think it's because we want to connect to our childhoods. So we want to connect to the thing we love. And what we love is is these characters. And I find it interesting we haven't seen Leia yet. But right. uh, I don't know if there's any scenes that she's in that are appropriate to have in a trailer. So, I mean, that's JJ did such a great job putting this trailer together. I, I have no critique of it. I'm so happy 
that we have, we got to see what we got to see, the new and the old, and the bridge between them. And, uh, just to see Han, it just wearing the black jacket, just looking exactly like Han, I expect Han Solo to look at this age and at this stage in his life. Still vital, still out there flying around with Chewbacca. You know, I, I think there's something just, that someone else pointed happy. out. It's very interesting, like, you know, decades from now, people who aren't really aware, you know, if they're just like, yeah, I'm going to check out Star Wars, and I'll just pick up, you know, now I'm on Return of the Jedi, and I'll go and pick up Return of the Jedi, The Force Awakens, blah, 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 and then they kind of watch them back to back, and they're like, hmm, if they didn't know there was, you know, 30 years between the two as far as filmmaking, they're right. like, how do they age? Here's right. something like that, and then they realize, no, they really did wait. They waited. 30 years. It's kind of like uh, Richard Lee Letter's Boyhood. <laughs> Yeah. You know, a movie that took, what, 12 years to make? 10 yeah. years to make? 12, um, 12 years to make. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Harrison definitely looks older, but he does not look like he's in his 70s. Um, he's going to be, God, he's going to be 73 this year in July. So, I mean, I just, I, it's so perfect I, for him to come back and that, like now it's like then there's the questions where have they been why you know where is home <laughs> you know have they how long have they been gone <laughs> um, so you know how long has it been since he saw Leia is Leia on the ship too uh, you know did are they in Corellia you know did Han go home to Corellia you know so <laughs> and I'm sure there's like I mean just I mean I think it's interesting just going back I mean we're I'm, I'm kind of like freeze framing it like every. <laughs> like five seconds, but I think you could get down to like the like the like the even like milliseconds because as I'm going by, I'm like oh wait wait, I think I saw something there 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 because it's just happening yeah. so fast. Yeah, I did that with like because somebody sent me a meme uh, that had it was like who is that and then it was a circle around the little black figure in front of the flags behind the stormtroopers. And it was like, so I've stopped it a few times at that moment to see if I could, you know, make it bigger. It's like, you really can't tell who it is. It's just a figure that looks exactly like the emperor. Right. So we will find out. And it's like, I, I love all the questions. Yeah, that same we here. Have have. <laughs> I think it's definitely cool that we're going to uh, most likely get a female Jedi kind of um, kind of leading this new generation of Star Wars movies. I think that's right. extremely likely. Because we don't, I mean, aside from a few, we, we've we never really focused on female Jedi. Um, Ahsoka, I think, was, was really the first um, that got her own kind of the spotlight. Ayala Sakura, you know, to an extent, um, maybe uh, Adika Lea, but really Ahsoka was the first female Jedi we focused on. And I, I really think that we're right. This is, you know, be it's past time to show equality <laughs> in the Jedi order <laughs> that girls are just as strong in the force as boys. All right. Girl power, right? Yep. Fan girl power. Yeah. Jedi girl power. Yeah. Maybe I'll get that as a tattoo. Hashtag start, a, start a hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> Jedi girl power. Um, so, um, Anything else you want to talk about in either trailer? Anything else? I mean, of course, we'll get into celebration stuff with Leah, um, you know, hopefully sooner than later. But yeah. As far as these trailers, I, anything else? Just, I want more, but I also want to be completely surprised when I go into the theater. You know, I think JJ is definitely, like, I don't think he's going to, he's not going to hold back with anything, you know, like any kind of con thing. He's not going to hold back that much. You know, he's no. not going to, like, um, any of those other big questions we have, but I think it's more likely, I think the next trailer and then the, you know, the next one will have a, it'll, it'll show less stuff than say like some of the Marvel stuff, I think. But, yeah. Um, I mean, even like Avengers Age of Ultron, apparently it's very, um, the actual movie is very different. Than, yeah. Like, even the trailer. I, I've talked to people who in other countries who've already seen it. And I don't want them to tell me anything uh, except they did say that uh, Hawkeye gets a lot more uh, screen time than he gets a lot more respect paid to him than he did in the first film. Like he is a huge part of Age of Ultron. And that makes me so happy because Hawkeye is my favorite Avenger. You know, I, I remember back there were some rumors that it was actually going to play in front of 
Age of Ultron. Is it still doing that? Or um, I haven't heard. I heard the rumor, but nobody in Europe who already has seen it has said that they saw the trailer for Star Wars in front of it. Yeah, it I mean, might I be just I us. Just, I guess I was just thinking it was kind of in just us things starting like on May first or something. It's very possible, and you know, it'd be more appropriate if it was released on May fourth as that is International Star Wars Day. Right. But Unof- unofficial. Un- it's it's the, yeah. it's Star Wars Day. Yeah. Um so but May 1st is pretty close. I I don't you know, I'll be seeing it either Thursday at midnight or Friday morning. So I'll I'll try to catch I'll, I'm going to try to catch at 7 o'clock, but I'm guessing yeah. you'll you might have work or something. I've already asked for Friday off. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just in case if I can get a midnight showing on Sunday, on Saturday, on Thursday, then I don't have to worry about getting up for work. And if I can't get a midnight show on Thursday, then I'll go to the earliest show I possibly can on Friday. Sweet. Cool stuff. Yeah, so um, lots of stuff. I mean, I think Age of Ultron, it's going to be the number one box office. And I think it'll definitely give um, Episode 7 a run for its money. Of course, you know, we won't, we're not going to know which is the winner, Avengers or Star Wars, till, like, you know, to all the results. Yeah. yeah until until like, April or May of next year, you know, cause it, cause it's, I think it's the thing is that if it's people are going to go see, it's going to make, you know, over a billion, but if it's good, it's just going to keep going and going. Right. Uh, cashing up that money and um, making that money. So, um, and it has that chance of going past Avengers two, you know, it yeah. has a chance of hitting the 2 billion mark. If it's really good and people are saying, Go see it, go see it, go see it, go see it again. Well, the anticipation for Star Wars Episode Seven is is a little bit greater than for Avengers 2, for Age of Ultron. I think because you have, you know, so many people waiting for it, and there, there's, there's been so much talk, whereas, you know, so much talk, so much hype, so much, you know, so much press about Star Wars, whereas Age of Ultron, we didn't really hear a lot during the making of it. We, it just was like, okay, we're they're, they're shooting it now. They're done shooting it now. They're doing pickups now, and that's it. And Joss, you know, coming out and saying that there's no end credit scene. Um, There's a mid credit scene, luckily, or a tag, as he calls it. There's a tag, yeah. After uh, the film ends, like within a couple seconds, there is a scene, but it's not. There's nothing at the end because he says he cannot top shawarma, and I disagree. But it would be really hard to top the shawarma scene. Um, I'm hope I was really hoping, and I'm still hoping that Agent Coulson or director Colson now will appear uh, at some point, either in that tag scene or in the film at some point. Yeah. Um, Cause they need to know he's alive. Agreed. And speaking of a billion, uh, furious seven did pass a billion at the box office. So, um, yeah, I knew it would, would because of Paul Walker. Um, I don't think like Vin Diesel and I love you, Vin Diesel. I think you're amazing. Uh, gorgeous. Um, I don't think it's going to get nominated for an Oscar. No. He thinks it should win Best Picture. And I'm like, I am all for really supporting your film and really believing in it. But I'm also for being realistic about your film. And uh, it's not the kind of movie that gets Oscar nominated. Right. Maybe the song. I don't know. Yep. I didn't I didn't see the movie. I, I was I thought I would. But I've only seen the first Fast and the Furious film, so oh, yeah. not they're, even Vin Diesel can get me to the others. Yeah, they're um, they're a lot of fun. They're just dumb fun. But, yeah, my yeah. mom's actually seen more of them than I have. Hmm. Funny. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to see it because you know of Paul Walker, but you know I just haven't had any time. I've been working like for just nonstop. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of big, a lot of big movies. You know, we got Mad Max. You know, a couple weeks, a few weeks mm-hmm. after Avengers, uh, Jurassic World, all these kind of competing. So I think it's definitely a possibility we'll get like um, billion dollar movies. Will be like you know Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Avengers, um, already Furious Seven, and uh, so at least those will yeah, uh, hit a billion. Yeah, I, I think Mad Max will Fury Road will do really well. I think it'll lead its week, probably its weekend. I I don't think it has quite the fan base that the other films have. Um, I know a lot of people who are like love the Mad Max films, and I love the Mad Max films, and I'm really looking forward to this because I think it, it's we're going back to the original writer and the original director, and uh, it just looks stunning. 
So I think it'll make tons of money. I just don't think it'll do as well as the others. No. no. Okay. Um, so with that, um, where can people find us, Nikki? Well, you can find us on Twitter at Radio Free Endor, or you can look for me at IR Olson or Jonathan at JE Bell 49er. And we're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Radio Free Endor. Cool. And you can um, also find us at um, Freddy Free Indoor at gmail.com um, just for any kind of comments, rants, raves, any of that. Um, start to just some discussion. Leave it an iTunes review. Um, we're going to try to do more and more uh, with Radio Free Indoor, maybe do some commentaries, um, look backs on some Clone Wars, just a lot of stuff, especially with Rebels on hiatus. We're going to try to do some yeah. more stuff. Um, and if guess, anybody has anything they want us, you know, th- they think we w- we should do or we would find interesting, let us know. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so for the Southgate Media Group and Radio Free Indoor, I'm Jonathan. I'm Nikki. 